Welcome everyone. This is the uh, January 19th um, Yellow Springs Village Council meeting. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes, Wintro. Here. Housh. Here. Sims. Here. McQueen. Here. Judith Hempling is absent this evening. Also present is Village Manager Patty Bates, Assistant Village Manager Melissa Van Zant, Electric Superintendent Johnny Burns, and Chief Hale, and Village Solicitor Chris Connard. <laughs> Lots of people. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to start off by saying um, uh, how, how incredible the Martin Luther King celebration was yesterday. Um, to thank everyone who was involved with the planning. I don't know everyone. I know Aaron Sari was involved. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Bomani and the committee at the church. It was an absolutely incredible event. Lots of incredible music. And appreciation to the Yellow Springs Police Department for keeping everybody safe as we were walking down Xenia Avenue. And of course, uh, congratulations to John Gudgel yes. for winning our uh, Community Peacemaker Award this year. Mm -hmm. Very well deserved. And uh, it was highlighted the role he plays in village mediation, which uh, we really highly value. Any other announcements? I actually have a couple. Um, and I know these, some of these are coming later, but I wanted to make sure they got out at the beginning of the meeting. So we have the second Coffee with a Cop tomorrow. And just like last time, those take place at our three coffee shops, the Emporium, Dino's, and the Spirited Goat. This time it's from 7 to 8.30, so that we- uh, Better say a.m. A.m., <laughs> thank you, to uh, get another shift of officers in, uh, which is great. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, VITA nominations, Village Inspiration to Design Award, are being taken for the Spring Award until March 1st. And those can be emailed to pac at wiso.com. And um, then I, I thought it was worth mentioning that uh, we have some special visitors coming on February 1st, which is uh, some of the students from Ms. Morgan's class. Uh, I liked um, what Karen mentioned about the uh, PBL project and, and Judy as well in her report. <coughs> Um, they interviewed council members as well as village staff, and they're going to bring a resolution to council. Uh, so we're really excited to take a look at that um, on February 1st. Great. I have one announcement. Oh, Marianne? Yeah, I had a couple things. Um, apropos to the Martin Luther King Day, uh, we had a former resident, longtime resident, uh, request write to Judith Hempfling and I requesting that Yellow Springs consider banning Donald Trump from coming here. <laughs> now, apparently Great Britain is considering this. They it? aren't. They didn't. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, Judith and I both declined to move that forward, being good members of the ACLU, if nothing else. But I thought it was I ironic that Trump, who seems to, his central message seems to be hate, uh, is juxtaposed to the Martin Luther King Day. And, and I saw this post on Facebook that Katie Eggert um, had. She was standing by a quote by King, and I just wanted to read it. Uh, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. And I think that celebration yesterday was mm. certainly um, pointed that out. Um, I just had a couple other things. Marianne, can you adjust your microphone? Which one are you working with? This one? Is it this? I'm not yes. sure which one. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, I ordered several copies of this booklet called Six Foundations for Building Community Resilience. Um, we had a couple commission members that wanted a, a copy of it. If anyone on council or staff would like to see it, and I'm, I think I'll see if I can stick a copy in the Yellow Springs Library as well. Um, and lastly, I wanted to announce that uh, Tecumseh Land Trust heard that we, we did get the Clean Ohio grant for preserving the wetlands on the glass farm, for uh, naturalizing that area, and making it an educational, putting up educational signage and paths. Right. So, so we will begin working on that uh, in the spring. Great. 
Thanks, Marianne. Mm -hmm. uh, Patty? I just have uh, one announcement, and that is that I would like to wish Councilperson McQueen an early happy birthday. Oh, Her birthday you. is next week. Yes. Okay. Happy birthday. Thank you. Seems like we've all had birthdays on council meeting nights. So. <laughs> um, okay. Um, next is the consent agenda. We have three items, the minutes of January 4th regular meeting, uh, the December mm -hmm. end of year financials, and a funding proposal for the Arts Council member show. Can I have a motion, please? So move. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Um, review of the agenda. Anything we need to add or move around on the agenda? You will need to add an executive session. Okay. For the purpose of discussing ongoing litigation. Okay. Uh, anything else? Okay. Um, petitions and communications. Brian, do you want to pick up where Lori left off by reviewing um, those every every meeting? I am prepared to do that. Okay. Okay. Go. Um, so uh, I did want to highlight we got our um, mayor's monthly report, which is typically in our packet. But one of the pieces that was in the report that's uh, that's different is the sort of year end stats. And uh, I think it's worth noting that in 2014, there were 276 citations that went to mayor's court. In 2015, um, since we've had Chief Hale uh, uh, in charge of the department, that is up to 465. So um, I think it's nice to see that our mayor's court is being utilized and it's something that I know we're gonna be talking about in the future. We also got, uh, two letters, one from um, Dave and Keiko um, Hergesheimer. 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 All right, it was pretty close. Uh, thanking the village for the new paved sidewalk um, between um, Allen and Herman Street along Xenia. This, of course, is part of our uh, water infrastructure projects that we've been working on. And uh, we had talked about earlier in the year that that was going to be a piece that was going to be uh, fixed, which is great. And the other one was from uh, uh, Steffi Campbell, thanking the village for our flour and sugar distribution that we do annually, um, which I know is a program we all love. And um, there was something from Judith, but I think it's probably more apropos to bring her comments uh, forward based during on goals. the, it during was, the different right. topics. It was, so I'll have that with me. Okay. Um, next we'll move on to public hearings and legislation. We have the emergency reading of ordinance 2016-01. Um, are we okay with title only folks? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, this is an ordinance authorizing the annual transfer of funds and declaring an emergency. Thank you. Um, can I get a motion, please? So, so moved. moved. Second. Um, Melissa? Um, basically, this um, is a piece of legislation that ties directly into the budget. Um, we have to have a separate ordinance in order to approve any transfer of money. So all of this was already built into the budget and approved. And typically it's just general fund transfers out um, to support the various funds. But uh, this time you'll notice that we have transfers that go between the enterprise funds or two of the enterprise funds into their respective improvement funds. So there are three uh, categories of tra transfers. We have the general fund which totals 1,083,879. And then we have sewer fund uh, that goes from the sewer uh, operating fund into the sewer improvement fund in the amount of $25,000 to start that up. And then the electric fund uh, operating into the electric improvement fund for $500,000. So that's just a last piece of the budget that needs to be done. Okay. And we're going to do one reading on this one, Judy, is my understanding? Yes. Right, okay. Comments or questions from council? Sounds good. Um, um, put, this, putting money into capital improvement yes. funds. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is a public hearing. I will open the floor for public comment. Seeing and hearing none, I'll bring it back for a vote. Judy, would you please call the vote? Yes. Housh? Yes. Sims? Yes. 
McQueen? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Uh, next, we have Resolution 2016-03. And do you want this by title? Why don't we read this one? All right. This is authorizing the village manager and the energy board to request review and recommend a solar proposal for the glass farm. Whereas the village is interested in reducing the carbon footprint of the village by promoting renewable energy as part of the village energy portfolio, and whereas it is in the interest of the citizens of Yellow Springs to make such changes, and whereas the village has therefore requested five solar farm proposals for a one to two megawatt solar array to be located on the village owned property known as the Glass Farm. Now, therefore, the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, does hereby resolve that. Section one, after review and consideration of each item included in the five submitted proposals, the village manager and the energy board shall make a recommendation to council regarding the proposal best suited to the needs of the village. Section two, the solar array shall be located on a portion of the village owned property known as the glass farm in a location that will optimize the future development of that property. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, <coughs> who's going to take this one on? I will. Okay. Um, you'll find in your packets a recap of the process so far, as well as, um, I believe, three separate um, maps showing various um, footprints. The first one is a color-coded um, a color-coded graph, for lack of a better word, that shows the wetland, the potential solar, and the potential housing um, area that would be left, which is between 24 and 29 acres. The other two show um, the two different footprints of the potential solar array that the energy board looked at during the meeting the other night. Um, one of them is in the uh, southwest section um, for a one megawatt, about five to six acres uh, southwest section of the property. The other one is also a one megawatt array, but it runs linearly along the western boundary of the property, and I believe that's the one that the Energy Board um, would like to do because it does, in fact, maximize the area that is left for the array. Um, and the Energy Board does meet this coming Thursday in a special meeting to um, consider proposals with special presentations from um, some of the vendors. And I see Rick here. I don't know if he wants to add anything at all. I can answer questions. I don't think I can add. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a question. I, I may have misunderstood, but when we were discussing at the Energy Board, it was my understanding that the providers had indicated that they would put the uh, panels going east to west as opposed to north south. They, they can actually lie, lay them out either way. Um, we just came up with that second footprint during the Energy Board meeting. So it wasn't presented to them until after that meeting. I did send this to the, the folks that are going to be making presentations, and they should address that um, during, the, um, during the presentations on Thursday night. Okay, so, and so then the, the map that's up there right now, uh -huh. is that the one that you're suggesting that I believe that was the one that the Energy Board seemed to prefer but the provi the people presenting were provided that one as well as the mm -hmm. previous page so they have both footprints I, I guess one other thing it seemed like there was an agreement that we only wanted the one megawatt as Correct. opposed to the two so in both of those maps it would be only one, the one section it, correct it would be instead of five to ten acres um it would be more like five to six depending on the layout of of the array and what was the preference to the one on that's up this is the preference that um i believe energy board expressed the other night rick if you want to um, well our thinking was if you if you have that map in front of you or, or behind me um the, where the where the writing is that represents uh, a one megawatt array, and if we oriented it that way, that leaves um, the the largest contiguous area of the glass farm um, are available for other purposes. So rather than running it down the uh, what would be the southwest south side, side mm -hmm. which would sort of make a big sort of dog leg, we thought a more rectangular area might be easier to uh, manage. Gotcha. That, was, that was our only, uh, otherwise it's sort of arbitrary, but if they can do it, that's, that, would have been our, that would be our preferred uh, 
orientation. And you still haven't gotten any feedback from them. You'll get that. You're having a presentation from the proposers. We have four vendors coming on Thursday, and so we'll have you know we'll, we'll have a sequential meeting because it's still business confidential, and so the energy board will sort of interview each of the, the remaining four. We we uh, decided that two of them didn't present uh, proposals that we thought were to our advantage. So right. there are four remaining, and. Uh, so we'll be interviewing yeah. them and, and yeah, discussing. Yeah, the, the resolution <laughs> actually says five, but we ended up with six. At the end of the day, we ended up with six, and four of them will be returning. So. And you said uh, they're, it's a confidential meeting? It's still business it's, confidential information. Because yeah. it's, okay. it's sort of proprietary. Each, each vendor has their own way of do, going about doing business, okay. and they prefer not to make that public if they can. So, will there be a public presentation, or is, is that... Is this going to be? Uh, it's not clear to me. I, I would think, as we've done here in council, we've allowed the public to come in, but the individual vendors can only each each vendor would come into the room pri separately, and then the the rest would remain downstairs in the lobby, so that they would there would be some isolation that way. But you're talking about Thursday. I'm I'm just wondering I, if this is if any of this is going to come before council. I don't yeah. necessarily want to hear four proposals. Once it, I, I, that remains, we will probably pick one of the vendors and make that recommendation, and you will decide uh, whether you want to hear uh, them all uh, propose separately or whether you would, you know, concur right. with our assessment. Right, we, and we need a little bit of feedback from council on that as to, to whether you want to see, you know, do you want us to whittle it down to one, do you want us to whittle it down to two? Um, I mean, I would, I would make the argument that the Energy Board has quite a bit of expertise in this, so I think that to have them do most of the legwork makes sense. Um, but if Council wanted to see more than one of the proposals, then we could arrange to have the two or three or whatever come before Council. Are these proposals going to include pricing? Yes, they are. So could we have some kind of table matrix? that compared some of the mm -hmm. basics? Right. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'd like to understand what the, the decision-making process is. Are those proposals themselves? Business confidential, yes. Okay. But we although, although I, I mean, I'm not sure at some, what point they're, they're going to have to be public. Well, right. When we, once we make a contract with someone um, similar to the water plant um, okay. information, um, but we can certainly get to council um, the maybe the spreadsheet that mm -hmm. um, Dan Rudolph did that shows each one in the different categories. Oh, so that's already been done. Yes. As as we as we get the proposals in, Dan has taken to uh, organizing some of the data so we can make some across okay. the board comparisons between vendors so we can help our thinking. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean that's very similar to what we did for the water plant. Right. So. And Johnny's and, and Patty are both involved in, in both of them, so that's that's good. I mean, I think I think I would be interested in the rationale, perhaps, and um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, if if there are if there are maybe two vendors that are that are similar or close, maybe we don't need to hear a review of all of them. But I guess I would be interested in in kind of understanding the thought process, I, I which I'm assuming we'll cool. get. I would right. think that would be included in, in our presentation to council when we do make the final recommendation, the rationale for our decision, including some of the hard data. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'd like to reserve the right, if they do look close, let's say there are two vendors that rise to the top to have a presentation, so. Okay. I'm sure that there's, especially with the, uh, the uh, tax credits being extended, I'm sure we have time for that. So. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Rick. Um, I wanted to ask a question since Johnny's here, um, and I know it's probably pretty obvious what the answer is, but I, the the comment about um, the East versus West circuit, could you maybe just talk about that briefly? Right now we have one meg for Antioch, and it is, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, it's on the East Circuit. I would prefer to have the other one on the West Circuit, that way we ain't got two solar systems 
with not regulated voltage going back onto the system. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I want to have on both circuits, one on each circuit. So that's, and you're addressing um, Brian's question Correct. about putting it at the C, uh, out in the area of the CBE. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. could you just explain that logistically a little bit more since the, the rest of us? The side? east circuit runs down by CBE. The west circuit runs down towards town. And so the uh, one at Antioch is already on the one for CBE, which is the three phase that runs down by uh, CBE. Mm -hmm. The west circuit runs downtown and it does not have the solar on it already. By us putting it where we're putting it, we're able to clean up the voltage a little bit before it gets further down the road to the downtown area. So it's not about measurement, but it's more about regulating? Correct. Uh, okay. Yeah, right, because when, when Johnny looked into the measurements like you asked, right. They're, they're pretty they close. ended up being pretty similar because he had that three phase that was already running down Enon Road by by Antioch Midwest. Correct. Okay. So they ended up being almost. I mean, I think there was like 50 feet difference mm -hmm. in the line. Okay. And there's and there's a couple other variables, and I won't say what they are, but it depends if they go with one option or two options, and that would have totally eliminate CB. Out okay. Of the right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I have mixed feelings about it only because it, it's potentially not the op most optimum use or what we had really had slated for, for, at, for the CBE. But the one thing that I would like about the CBE is that we would actually be showing this. You know, I, I like the idea that it's a little bit front and center, that people can actually see it. In this location, nobody's ever going to see it. Right. I mean, people coming into town will not have any idea at least you know Antioch College is, is is a lot of people see that so at least that's good I mean at least people see Yellow Springs as as a solar community and and you know dedicated to big solar so um, I mean that's that's the one downside to this location is that it's totally hidden um wait, wait a minute yeah, go ahead. The solar farm that we're talking about is going on glass farm, right? Right. If, if you pass the resolution, yes. Okay. So, so this second discussion that we're having concerns what now? Alternate locations. Brian oh. brought that up. Right. Because oh. one of the things was, you know, why why is the glass farm the best location? Okay. okay. But the proposal coming to us. It's going to include glass farm, or yeah. it could include it's CBE. Strictly glass farm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. CBE is not because the the vendors haven't have looked at glass farm. Right? The vendors That's have looked at glass okay. farm. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Just trying to be clear. Here. Um. Right. Do we have to wor worry about stormwater management? I don't think not so. I know of. Oh, okay. I can't answer that. That's do you, do you mean for the solar? I think that was brought up with when the Antioch project came online, and I think at that point, whoever researched it said no. Okay. So, right. and, and who is maintaining? Who's doing the mowing? That would be the solar people that own the property or own the solar. Oh, they'll maintain. Right. right. All, yeah. All of them have, and so this is pretty standard. All of them have offered a power purchase agreement, which is where they build it, they maintain it for a certain period of time, and then the village has the opportunity to, to purchase it at the end of that. During the, during the initial period, the village buys the energy that is generated by it. Um, but then at the end of that term, be it 25, 30 years, whatever, the village has the opportunity to purchase it back okay. and own the array, at which point we would take over maintenance. And, and they, are, they are using the RECs? They are, that's no, we are keeping every one of the proposals mm -hmm. was told that we wanted the RECs. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I thought that was their incentive to do it. Well, it kind of is, but they're all agreeing to it. So. Wow. Okay. So then that opens the door for community solar, is that? That opens the door for community solar because Johnny and I think we have a way to do that internally. And also the fact that we're keeping the X, S Rex um, allows us to use that potentially to get a grant or something mm -hmm. like that to improve our energy portfolio. Can I so, yeah, so if the community had a community solar, then that would be our third? 
No, no. What, what we're talking about um, is doing an internal process where um, citizens could potentially purchase part of the energy produced by the solar array internally through the village through a, a supplemental payment or a green account, what Johnny calls, calls a green account, um, but it would be within our one megawatt array. But it's, it's not ours, it belongs to the contract. But it would be internally for us. Um, we, but we would, we would be buying. We're purchasing the energy, energy. so they would purchase okay. it from us. Okay, similar, similar to the way we purchased the Correct. energy through AMP. Correct. Correct. Okay. But we just the, have uh, a small surcharge on it to, to be a green account. But then they could get the advantage of the recs, right? No, that, we would still keep it. It would recs. still be the village. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it would it would basically be a, a <clears throat> something that they would want to do just to support solar energy. Correct. Not Correct. I mean obvious hopefully everybody knows mm -hmm. in this Correct. scenario they're not getting those electrons. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Just like they're not getting Maybe. those specific electrons from the rest of our green energy. Right. So. Um, I guess I do want to just go back to the stormwater management mm -hmm. and, and make sure that we've thought about that because when I think right. about the Antioch project, I feel like part of the reason that wasn't an issue was because of the land itself. Well, I, and so, you know, we're dealing with a different area with that, you know, wetlands piece. Right. And so. And I can tell you that topographically, um, this area sits just a little bit higher, so it would it would naturally drain toward the wetland anyway and there is kind of a um, if you look to the orient myself here east of that footprint um, where that tree line is where the P is in potential housing um, there is a, a slightly lower area there that also um, is more of a um, a, a little bit um, of a depression that leads on down to the wetland, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. So the natural flow would be down towards the wetland anyway. Okay. Can can we make it part of the contract that they at least have to <coughs> that, that that they are responsible for a survey or a, a site survey or something to? Um, we actually did it a little bit during the uh, preparation for the Clean Ohio grant that Marianne was just talking about. Um, Krista and uh, Michelle from Tecumseh Land Trust looked at the different soil types and the topography there, and it just naturally lends itself to going down towards the wetland. But we can certainly address any any stormwater uh, runoff during well, during the contract. I mean, it's part of the planning process anyway. Well, and if it's there, I, although it's our land, but if it's there. If, if it's their construction, if it's their, their right, equipment, then if there is something happening, <clears throat> we should probably have part of the contract that it is their responsibility. Right. Mm -hmm. um, because it could be coming from the water sheeting off mm -hmm. and, and feeding, you know, right. however they, it might feed it um, into right. a certain area. Rick? Uh, yeah. I was just going to say that the, the nature of a solar array is that it's, there's very little impact on the soil, whatever the per current permeability of the soil is, it should be retained because there's there's just basically posts in the ground. So it's it, whatever it's doing now, it's going to probably do after the, the array is in. It's it's you know it's, it doesn't it doesn't provide a whole lot of impermeable surfaces where you can increase the amount of rain on uh, runoff. It, it should be behaving just as it always has. Okay, yeah, I I think that probably some uh, an architect someone. Yeah. Uh, with this kind of expertise can just give that information because it's not like putting a house, it's not like putting a uh, permeable, uh, impermeable surface down there. Right. Really. Yeah. We, we can certainly address it during the planning process. And, and I assume that whatever the tree, um, the divider, the trees that are, mm -hmm. that are surrounding that will all be removed? Uh, I think they'll probably just move them out far in the the uh, array out far enough that the trees aren't a, a, an issue. That that could be negotiated. Uh, right. If we wanted to maximize the remaining space, we could push the array up to the very perimeter of the property if some of the trees were probably. Right. Then you'd have to remove the trees. And so yeah. they're, they're probably scrub how trees. Much, how much, you know, we want to squeeze out of it. Right, there aren't too many along I was gonna, the, there aren't too many along the western border of the property. It would it would probably be more just down in that southwest corner. 
and how much I mean I guess there really aren't any any at this point there aren't any uh, homes directly abutting mm. this so no. I mean I, is there has there been any kind of communication with are there any is there anybody within the area because it would be a conditional use right um, it would be a conditional use but there's nobody within the okay. area that that really I mean the, they're all farm fields essentially okay um, did we already uh, renegotiate with the, um, the ladders. The no, farm. I haven't because I was waiting to see if council passed this resolution. Okay. okay, are we are we ready to take a vote? Or are there any more questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Johnny. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, now is the uh, point in the agenda where we hear from citizens about items that are not on the agenda. Uh, we ask that you come forward to the microphone and state your name and keep your remarks to 30 minutes or 30 minutes geez three <laughs> minutes excuse me <laughs> 30 would be a long time yeah that would be a long time <laughs> um, seeing and hearing none I will bring it back to the agenda bring it back council table uh, we have no special reports um, old business will um, start by um, picking up on the council um, rules and procedures discussion that we started at the last meeting one thing um, that was one of the comments that Judith had um, one of the things About that we kind six. of threw in um, at the end of the discussion was um, the idea of starting the meetings at 630 mm -hmm. Judith expressed opposition to that because she just felt it was um, intrusive into meal time. Uh, meal time for I would say for council members and for citizens wanting to come to the meetings um, and I don't disagree I I think I think it's I would say it's something we could keep as a, as needed on an as needed basis but keep our regular meetings at seven o'clock what's anybody else think I'm fine with that fine with it um, I don't rem I mean I don't remember what our hang-up was on this and why we didn't already approve it I um, to say. we wanted to add work sessions which was added and that looks great um, we added assistant managers reports as well as that's right okay. manager um, and also made it clear that we have a consent agenda now um, I actually I had I guess two other comments for the new iteration um, I wondered and I don't know where it goes maybe decorum but since you sometimes announce about cell phones being turned off maybe that should be articulated in this um, and then I think this is new it's under public hearings it's a second paragraph and it talks about emergency so I'll just read the sentence in time sensitive situations an ordinance may be declared an emergency which means it will go into effect immediately rather than in 30 days as is legally required and I think that should be re reworded because this makes it sound like it's not legal to do right. emergencies um, and I know that always comes up so maybe spending elaborating on that a little bit more would be good um, so yeah I, I thought the, the revised document looked great and you had had, a, you'd had a question about whether the links were still operable and connected and they, they do okay they are. You, you have to right click and select it and then go to it but it, it goes and it's it's accurate each, oh. of, the, each of the links cool um, and I guess that also does remind me um, I don't know if we're approving this tonight but I, I did want to are the links about the attachments is that what you're because I did want to make sure that uh, the five attachments that are referred to can also be easily accessed where is that here so like attachment one is summarizing something in the ORC and attachment three is summarizing something about emergency meetings but there are five attachments that are referenced in this document 
And I guess I mentioned that because I know a lot of times uh, finding those attachments has been okay. a challenge. Okay. So just making sure yeah. we dig those up and. I'll double check those. Yeah, I'm, so you're wanting something to be put in here about, um, I mean, I would say cell phones and other it's, devices. I almost think what you, w the quotation, you know, whatever blurb you have. Right. Maybe well, that and I don't use, always right. say it, but. But just um, so it's on paper. Well, I can get that to Judy. Um, so let's, let's, since Judith isn't here, let's just wait until I don't think there's any rush on this. So let's make these um, last couple of changes and um, bring this to the meeting next, to the next meeting. Does that seem reasonable to everyone? Yep. And whatever you're planning on adding, whatever you just were talking about. So, okay, that was easy. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, now we'll move on to 2016 goals. We, um, we have the document that was in our packet was um, a color-coded one that we had had, I think, earlier in the year that we had looked at. Um, we have one item that's complete um, that's in the dark green that's tough to read. Actually, um, there's another one, um, seven. Um, the Environmental Commission did develop a rationale for oh, green okay. space funding with the Council Land Trust. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, then, um, so then th what's in yellow are underway either by staff or council, <coughs> excuse me, or commission. So, um, you know, I don't know how we wanna, how we wanna go about. Um, Judith did provide some goals, um, a couple of, of her goals, Marianne also, I have, um, for me, it's a lot of carryover, and uh, I have one major new goal and um, kind of continuing what we've started. Um, I, I would appreciate it if we would go through the goals and indicate what has been done and where it okay. stands. So <clears throat> start with the number one, the water projects. Let's talk about what's complete. The, the bottleneck and the loop completion project have been completed. Those were um, water line projects. Um, what is ongoing is the um, plans for water plant and to begin construction. Uh, I would say we, um, in, in 2015, we um, got through, the, well actually we got through all of the three. So, so we have the, the bullet points, activities required to reach goal and objective, finalize the plant design with citizen input, that's complete, we did that. 30% design drawings were done. And we did put the project out to, out to bid mm -hmm. um, in a timely fashion. We're now in process of, um, of negotiating um, that bid with Shook. So I'd say we're actually well into that. Certainly we'll be going through 2016 and much of 2017 doing the actual construction on that project. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the Wellhead Protection Plan update and implementation. <clears throat> I know it's something that that um, Environmental Commission has yeah, taken up, and, and it really sort of <clears throat> got stalled for various mm -hmm. reasons. Partly getting in touch with the EPA, mm -hmm. but I really want the energy. Uh, the Environmental Commission to really focus on mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah, I would. That would definitely. I I actually um, I w almost wonder if it needs to be a separate out of that water project. Um, I, I category think I think it separately. Separate. It, it, separate. it feels like it just it just feels like it gets lost there. Um, but I definitely agree that it should be one of our goals this year. And and then I think <clears throat> if we do that, it's for the most part a goal directed toward that commission. Not that it wouldn't involve council and the community, but the commission and staff are going to be the ones that. Are right. Doing well, I, I see it potentially being very similar to the solar project uh -huh. where. The Environmental Commission takes it to a point, you know, determines are we going to need a, a consultant, um, you know, that would be then handled, I think brought back to council, handled by staff. So I think I see the majority of the work, yes, being done by um, Environmental Commission. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Uh, the next one, uh, goal number two, was to create a sustainable economic development strategy to support existing businesses and entrepreneurs and attract new opportunities that support the values of the community. Um, the bullet points under that reestablish the Economic Sustainability Commission. That piece is done, and they, there has, have been two meetings. I'd say one really official meeting right. so far. Um, and just, I will, I, I will actually be the alternate. Judith let Brian know that um, she won't be able to be the alternate on the um, Economic Sustainability Commission. So, um, and, and Brian and I will actually be interviewing more people um, soon. So um, I see that commission up and running um, well. Um, update the comprehensive land use plan. Um, that's an interesting one. Um, revise economic sustainability plan. You know, the comp land use plan is probably doesn't belong in that category. Yeah. I mean, the, updating the comp plan is really about planning commission. Mm -hmm. What I would say is that, you know, we would see where planning commission is on their interest in doing that, but they should, there should be interaction between planning commission and um, the economic development or, or the, the economic sustainability commission mm -hmm. as to how those how the comp plan is supporting economic development. Maybe so it, that should also be taken out and made a separate yeah, goal since it entails two separate um, And I don't know, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, just to be clear, that doesn't, I, I don't think that bullet means that it's just the ESC that does that, right? Well, um, I mean, but, I think it's a piece of coming up with this strategy. Although, I mean, seriously, updating the, uh, the comprehensive land use plan wouldn't happen without planning commission. No, I agree. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't think this is just the Economic you Sustainability add, Commission. You could add planning, yeah. Planning, planning commission, commission to people responsible. Right, and that kind of actually ties into the one about determine the best uses for publicly owned right. property as well, which is in the next um, fiscal sustainability Goal. I, mean, I have some things that, some specifics that I, because I'd like to maintain this particular goal. I don't know if I want to keep it at a number two, but I'd like to, um, I have a couple of things, a few things I'd like to add to that. I mean, is that, do you want, should we talk details now as we're going through it, Marianne? What do you think? Well, I was just thinking mostly of sort of seeing where we are. Okay. Getting on. Um, oh, the next is develop a strategy for fiscal sustainability. Um, that was really more about the budget and and finances as opposed to um, uh, as opposed to development that was review the monthly budget which we are doing um, that's really an ongoing thing that we are required to do rate studies um, we've completed have we completed all of those rate studies Melissa yeah well we're waiting on John Courtney to bring For back the, the flat rate okay. structure but the study itself is mm -hmm. complete yes okay so that's the flat rate electric structure right um, seek public input um, determine best uses for publicly owned property and this was in there because we were thinking about that as you know a way to uh, you know generate funds right so um, but it's interesting what Patty said because it also relates to uh, economic sustainability for sure. Well, I have to give credit where it's due. That was actually Melissa's thought. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> but yeah, in this context, it was about, you know, does that tie into how we stay solvent? Right. So, so the goal, which was develop a strategy, are these bullet points under under the goal is that the strategy is, are we saying that that those are the, the activities strategy. required to reach the goal and that that's the strategy those things mm -hmm. right okay um decide the number four is decide a strategy for sidewalk repairs and new construction um the only bullet point we had under there was analysis and recommendations from staff <coughs> Um, we got some of that, you know, that was one that was, was really hurt by the loss of um, uh, John Young, um, by him leaving at the time that he did. We did get his analysis and recommendations prior to leaving. Um, you know, yeah. I think we're, 
we got it. I mean, right. Now we have to decide what to do, but and how well, to do it. But. Yeah. Right, and I think that council just um, decided to hold off on that discussion until some of the other things were, were caught up a little bit. Right. Number five was plan for tax levy for 2016, analyze options. We did that. Uh, Melissa did a very good job of, of presenting us with options and, and uh, seeing what, what, the res what it would do going forward. Decide on actions, we did that. Citizen committee, we're in the middle of that. Judith and I are working on that in public discussion. So the first two are really are, are complete and then the other two are, are ongoing um, to be completed obviously by March. Um, so would it, would it help if the activities that were required uh, that are already done were also highlighted? I think so, yeah. In I, green or yellow? Yeah, definitely. That maybe that would help yeah. kind of show a little bit better mm -hmm. where we're at okay and I'd like to use a color besides the green because at least when it prints out the green is really dark and not oh. what's underneath it isn't readable okay number six um, involve community in developing a vision with goals for village energy use including citizens businesses nonprofits and village government okay. um, um, the energy board as I recall Rick you can correct me declined to take this on as a goal and, and I'll finish and then hear from you. Really, this, if we want to keep this as a goal, the climate action plan um, addresses this and the Yellow Springs Resilience Network. But the climate action plan really is, mm -hmm. is doing that. Yeah, well, we'll that's off to the right of who's, who's involved. Yeah, right. Rick, did you have anything to add? No, I, I, it's, it is something that we've been working on um, for many years uh, without a great deal of success. So, uh, I think there was some demural on that specific topic came up, but Marion's quite right. It should be included in, uh, in, a, in a reasonable climate action plan that, that we are participating in. So uh, we will have a hand in that. Okay, thanks. Uh, goal number seven, uh, review and revise is decided a rationale for the green space fund and its funding. Um, and, and as Marianne said, that's complete. We did get a report after talking and meeting with um, Tecumseh Land Trust on at least a rationale for the properties we fund. I think the, the thing that is missing though is, um, is if, are there any thoughts on where we could, where the funds could actually come from? That was, uh -huh. that was also part of it was, oh. you know, are there any, um, and I don't know that that, that, that that piece of it, that maybe that's something that, that staff could be thinking about. I mean, you mean the funds that we have in our budget as far right. as? When, okay, when we, um, we were putting estate funds. Correct. And that obviously we have no estate funds. I think we've, did we sell something? We did something and we put, there were funds from something that we put into that. Put into that. Do we have a, a source of funds? Is, are, is there a rationale for what funding, the amount of funding, the kind of funding, the source of the funding that we should be putting into? And I'm not saying, I'm saying there isn't. Could there be? You know, for example, if we sell property, you know, one of the things on here is the possibility that we might sell village property. If we sell village property, should some of those funds be put into um, the green space fund. And that's what I'm thinking about as far as a rationale for, because we don't have a dedicated source of money like we did. Mm -hmm. And so, so we're languishing a little bit. So mm -hmm. that's, that's what I was looking for also to understand, yes, what projects should we fund? Because I think we've got a little over our head there for a couple of years by overfunding. And, um, but it's, how do, how do we rebuild that fund? Um, number eight is to develop and implement a, fan, a plan and proof of concept to build a municipally owned fiber optic network that will support all Yellow Springs citizens and encourage economic development. That's clearly underway. Um, yeah, and, staff uh, and commissions are working on that. Yeah, and I recently heard that um, in March, the uh, there should be um, a white paper and a presentation brought to us. Okay. So it's very, very close. 
and the ninth and last goal is to expand the parks department expand parks department programs to collaborate with community members and organizations and to include arts and culture and environmental commission um, the points under that were to revise public art policy and forms that's complete mm -hmm. um, develop a plan to add arts and culture to parks and rec I would say that that's not complete and um, review use of the Bryan Center I think that that's something that um, the Arts and Culture Commission is potentially ready to take up is that mm -hmm. but that's well what I'm thinking though is more in terms of the art the, the gallery I don't right. know if there's been any further discussion on other use of the Bryan Center that's been a main focus um, the art gallery the, right? Uh, right the Bryan okay. Center gallery um, yeah I mean I think the uh, one of the drivers for this was certainly thinking about youth programming which um, you know I think our village team is is really taken on and has been doing an excellent job um, very impressed with what's going on when in the Bryan Youth Center so so should we I mean I, so next I mean should um, we be talking about what we think should stay or or remain or or be changed and I mean I guess that's really the next step is to um, decide what stays um, what points maybe what actions are modified um, may, maybe we could um, someone <laughs> or could take this and make the changes that we've already talked about both the things that have been complete the things that we know are ongoing well those two things I guess and then start plugging moving these goals around if we in terms of priorities and adding or at least discussing the things that well Judith has submitted something I have and yeah I've got I've got you one I've got a couple of things yeah and also Henry Myers made some suggestions that I thought should be discussed about taxes mm -hmm. and well why don't we get a document that is updated that's updated shows what you know other members think and then you know versus taking the time now for each individual yeah. to talk put them together and then talk it okay talk it out so Judy and I will work on that um, what about because I was you know I was negligent I we didn't get anything from the three of us so are you I don't have do we <laughs> <laughs> I said I don't have any that's what you did <laughs> You know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, what I'm wondering is, is should we take the opportunity to at least get those on paper, have them all in a document right. similar to this? Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that they're going to stay. Correct. Or it doesn't say mm -hmm. what the priority, but at least it gets it into. Um, and I can work on, you know, either using colors or fonts or do something so that we can know where they came from. Yeah, well, I will say part of why I, I didn't write anything in addition is, I mean, I think a lot of the goals that we established last year were multi-year right, goals. Mm -hmm. And and I like seeing, you know, for example, the uh, the community broadband should have been a two-year goal. I mean, mm -hmm. we shouldn't have right. just said 2015. But, uh, you know, I, I want to see these things through, and I, I still think they are priorities. Um, should I do we want to talk about the other well I think we're people? not since we're not being okay. specific I mean are you okay Marianne if we don't review what I mean we'll we'll yeah. get that next time okay. and yeah. Judith will be here and I so think that can. makes more sense so so I will take this and I'm sure Judy and I may work together I'm sure it's going to end up being a lot longer document I may either I may even turn this into a into a legal um, size mm -hmm sheet mm -hmm. but anyway so at the next meeting we'll have this updated and either at the end or somewhere somehow we'll have um, the new goals that have been brought up integrated into this and uh, I'm assuming that under the rank the other numbers are referencing village values is yes. that right okay because I remember that column got lost 
Right, and we okay. so we may we may do that differently just so it's it's clear what the, that may be one of the reasons that I'm extent making it a larger a larger sheet. Okay. okay. And, and I also kind of agree with Mary Ann's comment of having you know a few goals versus many goals. Right. Because we just you know by the time we get done approving it, we're going to be into February March. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, so it, that's not get carried away with it. And I guess we have not gotten any citizen feedback on goals? I haven't received anything, so, Judy, I, have you? I yeah, mean, Henry Meyer sent it. Oh, well, except well, for yeah, Henry, Henry, yeah. Henry did, yeah. Um, and who did he send it to? Because I didn't get it. I didn't either. Um, Maybe I got a copy. Two of them. Oh. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. us. Yeah. Who? Do you and Marianne? Yeah. Yeah, and so are, the, is it going to be shared? I'll send it on to the rest of the council. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't pay attention that it wasn't to Judy. I just kind of assumed it was, but I guess it wasn't. Yeah, we need to be cognizant of that when it appears that, I mean, I think we each, we all get emails that, you know, are intended to be maybe for our eyes only but when when things should be sent to judy we need to when it should be yeah, for for I all did. of us we need to make sure judy gets just, it that's really the easiest that, so. any citizens i mean citizens are here we want to hear from <laughs> citizens any comments on goals from the two citizen three citizens here well i do want to thank the uh the yellow springs news for uh -huh. promoting that uh as we asked so so um, I don't know that we want to talk much about retreat planning. Um, so do we at least feel that we do want to retreat this year? Is everybody in agreement with that? Yes. And time frame? Are we? <coughs> I mean, we're. I think we're probably definitely into February or past February at this point. Right. Um, so we're into March and April, or April, which is about the time we've been doing them. So we're back on, you know, we're kind of on that track. Um, I mean, let's just, we should probably, we should probably coming up with, a, start coming up with ideas for, um, you know, for discussion topics and then um, also um, Dates, Judy. Do you want to handle just maybe throwing out? I mean, yeah. is okay. Is anybody is anybody going to be gone in March or April? Any major um, oh. issues in March or April? I'll be gone for a week in April. Um, I will be gone from the 9th through the 16th. Anybody else? No. We'd probably Potential. be doing it on a weekend, I guess. Right? Is no, we usually we do, it, do it during the week. Did we do it during the week? Okay. Yeah. I thought we did yeah. it on a Saturday. Chris? We did it during the week, but I would be around March and April. Okay. If I go anywhere, it'll probably be the same week. Okay. Is anyone Judy? else doing the, I'll, I'll be here. the safe routes to school? Melissa. Is, Melissa, are you going to that? Okay, yeah. so Melissa and I are going to be on that bad on the 5th and the 7th through uh, the 7th of April. Okay. So that takes the first two weeks out, essentially. Okay. So, um, I mean, maybe let's look at, at March. I mean, I'd rather do it earlier than later. So let's, let's look at March. Um, maybe we could do it at the hotel. We have a nice Ooh. conference room upstairs. Huh. So, which would probably be the perfect size. So I'll start putting that together. Maybe Judy, you're you're the planner, so maybe start putting some dates out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, next item on the agenda is under new business, website, and social media policy discussion that will be led by Brian. So, um, you know, certainly one of the things that we've talked about, uh, I guess it wasn't specifically articulated as a goal, but, um, you know, we've for a long time talked about uh, the value of having a village Facebook page and using social media to communicate with citizens. And um, that was uh, a piece of when we had our international fellows here, research that they did on other municipalities 
I mean, basically, most municipalities have a social media presence. And I know that one of the things that we wanted as council to establish before we move forward with that was some kind of policy. Um, so the community access panel did finally uh, put together a draft um, after different commissions sort of attempted to look at it. And um, some highlights is uh, first, a recommendation that all posts on our Facebook page are driven from the website. So that is something that's pretty easy to do um, as far as technology goes. So instead of you know, typing your post into Facebook, you type it into the website and then it automatically posts to Facebook. And uh, the reason for that was that it would facilitate archiving um, because we would have everything uh, archived in our website. So we're going to um, say something about it? Yeah, the only concern that I have is that I don't know, I can't think of a specific right now, but it, it does seem like there may be times that we would want to post something on Facebook that we wouldn't necessarily put on the website. And I, I guess I, I can't think of anything specific right now, but right. you know, if, if we overload the website with all of that, I mean, mm -hmm. there may just be something that we would rather post on Facebook that not necessarily doesn't have. Well, to it could be, and I will say I was resistant to this suggestion uh -huh. as well. Um, but you know, it can be facilitated, you know, with anything like it could be a blog that automatically posts or mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But I, I thought that was something that we should consider mm -hmm. um, because again, basically anything we put out there, even if it's on social media, is supposed to be archived. So right, and, and I understand that, and we can archive. It, Facebook, I believe, has an archive function. Right. Um, I just, I, I don't know, I, I think there are probably things that Chief puts on the Facebook page that don't necessarily belong on the website. I would agree. I think, yeah, I mean, I know you're thinking of emergencies and things like that, but, you know, I just saw somebody just just ask a question on one of the Facebook pages, is, what, is trash delivery been um, delayed, which I'm sure it has because, or trash delivery, trash pickup been delayed because of the holiday, and I'm sure it has. Mine got picked up yesterday. Really? I expected okay. it to be delayed, but yeah. Okay. Well, but things like are, that, right. that, that, you know, you don't necessarily have time or it, you know, it, it, it maybe it's already on the website. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, don't forget with Facebook, you, it has to be there, you know, at the moment. I mean, Facebook is more of an at the moment kind of thing where, the website is going to be more of a continual. You know, you'd have something there for weeks potentially. Well, um, I, I mean, I, and again, as I admitted, I was hesitant about this piece, but I think maybe we aren't used to doing it that way, yeah, but it's a way that, that, that municipalities do do it. So I, I think we should at least explore that okay. as a piece of this. Um, but I, I'm not necessarily convinced. The other thing that's important here is the content restrictions. I think this is probably the, the, the thing I wanted the most, which is that we have clearly posted the do's and don'ts. Um, and so obviously we don't want um, you know, profanity, sexual content, some of these things. These are pretty basic. Again, none of this was uh, created originally. It was all based on what other municipalities do. And the other important piece Excuse is, me, Brian. yes. Um, so these restrictions, this is all about posting that will come directly from the village government. Is that correct? And mm -hmm. also, if we did allow commenting, um, then it would be restrictions on those comments as well. Um, okay, because I thought it says. But that's the other piece. Pub is that commenting would be disabled? Exactly. So. Um, we are, you know, so the proposal was, and this is actually backed up by the research that um, Nadia and Rati did, that the majority of municipalities do turn off commenting, or at least don't use that. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, though, when Judy and I went to a social media for municipalities conference together, Kettering in particular noted that they don't care about that at all. They allow all comments and it has not been a big deal. So there are two sides to that, which is, you know, it's certainly there's advantage of getting feedback. And I will say, um, I mean, my understanding is the police department Facebook page allows commenting. No, you don't do. 
I've seen comments on there. I've seen, I thought it was turned off, but there's comments on there. <laughs> yeah, so, so I see comments, but I have not found any thread that I thought was problematic or detracted from um, you know, the, the goals of that page to communicate. So it's interesting to me. I personally don't care about the commenting, but the recommendation was maybe we start by disabling that and then we can revisit it moving forward. Um, so I think those are the kind of the three main would, pieces. Yeah, I yeah. would almost say the opposite to, to throw it out there uh, with comments. I mean, it just as a normal Facebook page and see, see what happens. See if, you know, see if we're getting, because I'd rather, um, I'd rather people feel, you know, kind of feel welcomed to it and, and, um, that they can participate in it. And, um, you know, I mean, my feeling is if, if we're covering these, I mean, if we've got these restrictions and they're, um, clearly posted, they're, they're clearly posted and it, it applies to everyone, then, you know, most of the things that we would absolutely want to be taken off could be taken off or will be taken off. I, I, mean, it's I a, agree with that. So it's a, it's a, um, I guess the problem will be monitoring. I mean, this would almost require 24 seven monitoring. Mm -hmm. And that was brought up as an issue. Um, but again, I, I think it's interesting, um, you know, that we have not seen that specter, uh, that has been raised with, um, the YSPD Facebook page. And so, you know, I, that just, maybe that indicates that folks understand what different Facebook pages purposes are. So. I, I'm willing to try anything. I mean, if, mm -hmm. it, if it gets, if it, I guess my opinion would be if it got to be a problem, you could always disable the ability to comment. You know, you could, you could say, um, you know, or you could block a particular user if that person became horribly, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, horribly rude or well, I'm not sure what inappropriate. word. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. That's a good word. Um, so. And I assume we'll have multiple admins. Well, I would think at least myself and Melissa. Um, I don't, I, would think, I don't know that we want to have too many admins unless, you know, one, uh, maybe one council member of Brian wants to do it, although I think Brian's probably got his hands pretty full. Ruthanne would be a good one too. Just yeah. I would say, Ruthie, I would say right. Judy also potentially. <clears throat> you know, we could, all, we could all keep an eye on it. I mean, I think, I think potentially a couple council members. I mean, cause it, just because I'm so close to, to so many different things. And I mean, I would like this because I take care of, and as does Brian, so many different pages that, you know, you, you know what kind of content you want to put on. Mm -hmm. And I think, it, I think it does tend to make interaction and it makes a face more interest or a page more interesting if it's not just, hey, trash pickup is right. tomorrow. And, you know, I, sure. I would like it to be some human interest. I would like there to be some community, like the post I put on the, the chamber page yesterday would have been perfect, I think, for um, even sure. for the village page. Yeah, art cans. I mean, there's so many things that we do that are so cool. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely, you know, I argued for something more liberal, but you know, ultimately, this is the re recommendation that the group came up with. Um, I guess one other thing I will say is I, I think it's important that we don't try to have different Facebook pages for all of the uh, different commissions who might want to promote things because it is very hard to keep a Facebook page going. Um, well, if Melissa and I are both admins, between the two of us, we cover every commission. Right. So those could be streamed through right. you. Because um, I know, you know, the HRC, for example, has talked about having its own Facebook page. And that sounds good in theory, but it's very hard to keep up with mm -hmm. it. And again, I'm, right. I'm impressed that the chief has, has kept that up. Um, because if you're not posting something at least once a day, uh, people just lose interest. Mm -hmm. so. Is it possible to be friends with, like, like if someone wanted to be friends with the Yellow Springs government 
Facebook page of the police department. Is that you, you can be a you like it. You can like it. You can like it. And then do you automatically receive the posts? Or uh, not? They all come into your news feed, but you have to prioritize yeah. those if you want to see them. Um, otherwise, they just get buried. Uh, the basic difference is, you know, these kinds of pages, like village pages, aren't a person per se, so it doesn't have that friend structure. So, but yeah, you can select, you know, I want to see all of these and get notifications mm -hmm. of the village page. Which, I, you know, I mean, I think we will use it. I see it being used on in, for emergencies, you know, sure. things, things happen, water main break, those kinds right. of things. Right. Um, I mean, that won't be the only avenue, but I would certainly encourage um, people to, citizens to, to like the page right. um, so that they get those kind of, I mean, in some respects, it's, it's one of the quickest ways people can find out stuff. Sure. Right, usually we post it on like the bulletin board. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, uh, that kind of thing. Oh, that's but this right, would yeah. be nice because then Johnny doesn't have to go that route yep. and he could do it directly. Right, Ruth Ann, yeah. Right, or Ruth Ann <laughs> does it for Johnny. Okay. Um, and I guess another thing to consider would, you know, again, be, you know, with the PD page that could migrate into the village page if that was easier for Chief. Um, I kind of imagine all this stuff could flow into one channel. Um, so. I guess um, I do have a comment then on the content restrictions if we're having public comment, uh, which is um, the idea of personal attacks. Now that, that's a difficult thing to regulate and I almost wonder if we should have like a little mini workshop on that. I mean, how can you disagree with someone without personally attacking them? But, but I think that's something we need to learn. But who would you invite to the workshop? I mean, you know, I think council <laughs> understands about it, so it would be more of a, you know. I'm not so concerned about council. Right, but that's, my point is, the people that would probably do that may not be the people who want to come to the workshop. It, and there's disagreement on that. I mean, Mary, all you have to do is read every one of those pages, especially open discussion, and there's disagreement about they disagree with each other. I mean, that, that is one of the biggest challenges of open discussion that, you know, people are, are either attacking or not. Then the attackers get attacked. I mean, it it's, is possible to disagree with someone right. and not personally attack them. Oh, absolutely. And I think that it is a skill worth learning for all of us. And I, I, I mean, I'll see what I might be able to come up with with about that. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I think generally, um, given some of the dialogue and the debate that happens on some of our, some of our Facebook pages, not ours yet, obviously, but open discussion and some of the others, I would absolutely welcome that for the community. I mean, I would welcome HRC, that being one of HRC's that, that goals was a this good year. Suggestion. Well, um, it, it has like been, that. it was suggested a year ago, too. It was actually okay. one of the goals, oh. so. I would, yeah, I would love that yeah. because okay, it, it is, and I, you know, and, and when I read things, I can see, I can really see both sides, and, and it really is, I mean, I think part of it has to do with the passion in Yellow Springs and, and the intelligence of people and, um, you know, wittiness and whatever else. I mean, I think things are often taken. Um, well, I think that people, well, for one thing, I think we're ignorant about it. We don't know how to do it. I mean, there are, some be, yeah. people, there are some people that know how to do it, but there are few. So people tend to see it, I think, as either I can't be critical, you're, you're silencing me, or I can say whatever yeah. I want to. And it's that where, where we find a way to be respectful and disagree, even mm -hmm. disagree vehemently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... And Marianne, are you saying you don't see personal attacks in here and you are? I, yeah, that's correct. Okay, and then you're contemplating we've just that. been tasked, right. we're just tasking HRC with okay. finding out how to do this. But, I, I mean, I, if we're going to post this somewhere on the Facebook page, it probably needs to be in there. I mean, and, and I think that, I mean, I, I let's see what it kind there, of Well, this is I where think, it starts to get tricky because... You know, I think what's what's good about these content restrictions is they're pretty objective. But and so, you know, I, I feel like, you know, we have to keep that in mind with just freedom of speech and everything. But what we're not, what we're talking about here is not necessarily a content restriction. What we're talking about here is 
making the discussions constructive. Right. And so I think that maybe if you add something of a disclaimer to the page that says comments are welcome as long as they're kept constructive um, and there are no you know personal attacks or something like that, you know you need to have that disclaimer. You know we welcome discussion on various topics as long as they're constructive and not destructive right. or. Well, I mean, I think it would need to be clear somewhere that these, I wrote down personal attacks, I don't know if we're there yet, but these are, how, however, allowed. that literally if somebody, if any of these are on there, they're going to get, th sure. those, those comments will be removed immediately as mm -hmm. soon as they're seen and that the, that the poster may be banned. Correct. Um, so I think that that may be given a warning and then potentially banned depending upon how bad it is. Chris, are we, if we're talking about personal attacks, are we treading on thin ice in terms of? It's, if it's our page, are we permitted to ban people from it for that reason, if it's stated on there? Um, you've raised the issue of what's objective and what's subjective. Um, I think that one, one presumes that people have a sense of what's appropriate speech. I mean, I think that you see that when we see the letters to the editor um, that are published. Um, there is not a, a bright line legally. And, um, but I think as a matter of policy that the village would be better off having a policy that, that outlines what prohibited behavior would be and that there's a uh, standards that the village will adhere to and that the possible sanction would be uh, that person would be prohibited or even permanently banned, could be prohibited for a period of time. I mean, it's not a you're in or you're out type of situation. Um, it's just a matter of the policy that the village wants to implement. I know that's not a very good answer, <laughs> but um, I, you know, I, I, in the in the investigation that, that the interns did, did they see any standards that other communities had used? I mean, this basically covers it, and you know, I think there are you know those those issues of you know, I I, I didn't see any legal cases in their research, um, but, you know, there was that sort of bright line or, or where you draw the line on things that we can definitely delete versus things that we might not like, and, so. And in this seminar that you and Judy went to, this workshop, they didn't talk about, I mean, Kettering has never had anything put on there that was potentially questionable? Um, I mean, they have these standards, so, you know, so, and they do remove you know profanity and those kinds of things but um, yeah their their philosophy and the I can't remember the woman's name but she actually said she'd be happy to come speak to us was uh, you know nothing was really a problem and uh, the comments that were made if anything maybe might be harsh but they brought up issues that should be considered so well, they were very open um, in fact I think they had less restrictions um, than this. The, um, go ahead. The Claremont County Sheriff used to have a web uh, Facebook page where he allowed comment, and I know that Miami Township Police, um, Sue Madsen, Chief Madsen has one. Right. Um, so I can um, check with them and see if they have any policies. The uh, Claremont County Sheriff did away with his Facebook page, um, but I know that um, Union Township and, and also um, Miami Township both have Facebook pages. Right. So um, I can check and see if they have any specific right. procedures for that. And I would add, when, when as lawyers, as we go to these seminars, on, uh, by and large, the lawyers don't like them because they're concerned of the unknown. But it, it, it seems to me that, um, one, whatever policy council adopts, it can always be revisited based upon situations that come up. Um, and. Um, I think that uh, typically one's better off assuming that people will behave within a certain standard of decency and, and respect and trust that that will happen. Um, and I think that that would be consistent with, with all of our experiences. We might have an occasional 
uh, ugly incident, but it, it, it's so few people and it's rarely sustained over a period of time. So if it were to happen, I think that, that we would just on a statistical basis assume that it's a, an isolated incident and, and move forward accordingly. And if it were to develop into a larger problem, then steps could be taken to address it through an, any number of vehicles. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked by the number of fans and posts that we have on, on the chamber page, the village page that we do for the chamber, how few. We, we have, we've probably only had to delete 10, 10 comments, and that's either been for profanity or they outright attacked an individual, um, and that was it, you know, and, it, and it's, I've been shocked. And I also like the stuff that's not, you know, this thing about it's not related to the post. You know, I mean, I think that covers mm -hmm. a lot of things, too. Um, yeah, I, I like the idea of talking about the purpose of this page and, and that constructive comment. I just don't think we can make that a, a restriction where we, you know, should make decisions about deleting comments mm -hmm. um, because of that. So, you know, what I envision happening is potentially is, for example, we put up a, a post about a water main break or we put up a post about <clears throat> brown water or something. That starting <coughs> something about staff or about, you know, and I think I'm most concerned about staff and, and, and staff feelings. Excuse me a minute. Somebody else talk. <coughs> but, I mean, that's... Um, so you don't want it to start personal attacks <coughs> on staff because we have brown water, so you don't want Johnny or Brad to <coughs> bear the brunt of that, essentially. Or, you know, if there's a decision that... I make that is not popular. Yes. <laughs> like that would ever happen. <laughs> but um, so you don't want to just, you don't want to <coughs> degenerate into personal attacks. Right. But, you know, I don't know how much of that we, we necessarily can restrict. Right. I think that's really <coughs> a gray area. Well, I mean, I, I is it, Brian, are you, you saying that you would be opposed to a disclaimer that says personal attacks on any? I like it as a, like the philosophy or guidance behind mm -hmm. the page. But <coughs> it's meant to be constructive, not destructive. Right. And, and you know, I, I want that purpose to be out there. And, and again, I'll, I'll go back to the PD page because people seem to get that, you know, and it's very different from open discussion, for example. Well, um, but, you know, but distinguishing that from <coughs> offenses that we will delete your comment. Well, I mean, I guess you could start with something that's uh, it's meant to be constructive, not destructive. And then if things do de 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 disintegrate to a certain stage, you can say, you can post on there personal attacks <coughs> you know, at that point. If somebody does go into a personal attack, then you can say personal attacks will not be tolerated on this page if you have a... Uh, an issue with a staff member, please contact the village manager or something like that. I'd rather see it up front. Yeah, let them know up front we're not going to tolerate it, and and be done with it. Don't wait for the attack to come. Tell them we're not going. You know, that's me. You know. But I think I think you know, you know, saying it in a in a, in a you know a constructive as opposed to. But I, I mean I think I think. I think it would be something for, that you could craft potentially, uh, Brian. Yep, I can. Uh... Well, we're not the first community to deal with this issue. I'll look into it as well and see if there's anything that's instructive that would be helpful to the discussion. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'll take a look. Um, my guess is I just don't know how we can how we can objectively make those kinds of decisions. Right. It just that seems to <coughs> get into an area. Um, but I'm not opposed to it. Um, so it sounds like maybe we'll come back to the next meeting. Maybe we'll revisit. We'll have something a little bit more concrete. <clears throat> I mean, maybe we can even, who's building the page? Who's creating the page? The staff is Brian. Um, um, I would not mind like, you know, kind of getting it set up and then, you know, letting the village team take it over. Um, so, you know, because I have an idea of, you know, what, what it could look like. And, um, and I guess that's another thing that we could do is we could have something up, see what these restrictions look like. Right. Do a I mean, let's just research. do a draft page. Let's build a page and see what happens. 
see what it looks like. We could have, we could have it up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wonder if you could frame it as something of a purpose statement in a way. I, I think that if you were, if you assume people meet the standard that's set and they're aware that the standard is that you're looking for feedback and, and to give out information as opposed to I think everyone knows open discussion has, has a much higher tolerance for mudslinging than the PD page and, and folks tend to mo you know moderate themselves accordingly if there's some sort of purpose attached it might just set the filter yeah and that, I guess that's the distinction I'm thinking is, is that purpose statement but we clearly have to have things where, you know, and we have to make it known that if we delete your comment, it's because of one of these reasons. And, and I mean, I think ultimately, if if this would get so um, damaging or out of control, we would just cease the page. I mean, there is nothing that requires us to have right. a Facebook page. So, you know, if 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 it can't be, if we don't feel it's being productive for us in the community then there's no point in having it. And we can make that decision, or staff could make that recommendation. So, okay, great. Cool. And I was, I will say that I was, have been very concerned about this and very, you know, kind of up for restriction and not really doing it, but I'm liking the, where this is going. I guess maybe just my own experience with the Facebook pages I do, I. I really think it could be a very positive thing. So um, I think it's. I think we can we can make it work. Um, next, we have the manager's report. Um, as you can see, the installation of new electric meters has begun. Um, they are well underway at this point. Um, I believe that we were able to do the um, downtown business district last Saturday morning. I didn't hear of any incidents, so hopefully that went without too bad of a uh, too many problems um, I think that was just Xenia Avenue right the, oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry yes the Xenia Avenue business district um, <clears throat> the employees of the um, HD supply do have identification badges and they are driving white panel vans with Illinois plates so if you have any issues um, or questions <coughs> about that please call the utility office um, the barn is uh, arrived at Sutton Farm, and uh, the crew is uh, starting to lay the groundwork on that, and uh, hopefully won't be held up too badly by the snow that we're expecting here in a couple of days. The drop ceiling uh, and the new lighting have been installed in John Bryan Community Pottery, and if you haven't seen that, it is like a whole new building. I bet. So wow. um, please go over there and have a look. The sidewalks outside the Bryan Center are now ADA compliant. Uh, the switchback will be removed shortly. Uh, as Brian uh, noted earlier, the second Coffee with a Cop is planned for tomorrow morning from 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. at the Emporium, Dino's, and Spirited Goat. Um, I do have there that we were, would be discussing the water plant um, <coughs> process in the council uh, at this council meeting, but there is no additional report. Karen and I discussed it, and you will have that report at the next meeting. Um, miscellaneous items, the EPA, um, we met with them and did uh, an asset assessment. They do recommend <coughs> that all council members, excuse me, um, complete the online RCAP trainings um, as far that uh, pertain to utility uh, asset management and you can find those online at the link. Um, if you complete all three sections with 100% the, and post the test, on the post test they will be, you will be able to print out a certificate that should then go in your file um, and I also need to know that you've completed those. Um, the last thing I have is that today we did get one piece of good news. If council remembers as part of our uh, <coughs> application for an OPWC loan, for the water plan. I also applied for a companion grant that would pay um, part of the interest on the OWDA loan during the construction period and I did get a letter today that we were in fact awarded that grant uh, for $162,800. Um, so that is a grant. We will not have to pay that back and it will go towards paying part of the interest on the OWDA loan during the construction period. Thanks. So. And that is all I have. You do, you will see in there Denise's report, end of your report. Which is very nice. Um, mm -hmm. As you can see in her, her, I think, what is it, four short months now mm -hmm. <laughs> that she's been doing the planning and zoning, she has been extremely busy. 
um, but she is doing a great job, and I'm really happy with her work. Well, just getting this report, this is a report I've never seen. Yeah. yeah. So no. this is amazing. <clears throat> and so, Patty, one thing is I was wondering if it's not too hard, I would be interested in what kinds of violations I saw there was a reference to 22 violation letters. Um, most of the violations have to do with vegetation growing out into the sidewalk. Um, mm -hmm. that is, that's a big part of it. There was um, one violation to clean up property, I know, um, that um, just had trash, et cetera, sitting uh, around it. Um, but most of them had to do with, with vegetation that was growing out into the sidewalks. Okay. And do you want to mention the uh, uh, home ink event since I neglected oh, to? Oh, <clears throat> yeah. If, if you want to pass it back down, I will. I didn't even think about that after I hand it to you. Um, home Inc. is having an open house on Friday, January 29th over on Cemetery Street for their second uh, completed home. Um, a photo shoot will take place at 4.30 p.m., <clears throat> followed by a reception with speakers, wine, and hors d'oeuvres from 5 to 7. I believe that Karen is going to be speaking on behalf of the village. Um, if you would like to go, please RSVP to Emily. Um, it says by Friday, January 15th, but I'm sure that if you just let Emily know that you're coming, it won't be a problem. And that's <clears throat> all I have. Uh, Melissa? I only had one thing to add. Um, I had the electric meter change out project in here as well. Um, one thing to add is that the crews are working on Saturday. So I know that uh, village uh, residents are not used to seeing um, staff around the meters on mm -hmm. Saturdays. So they are, are, they are working on Saturdays. That's a good point. Um, and 2015 fiscal year is closed. So the reports that were in the consent agenda tonight are the final year end reports. Um, they weren't <clears throat> they weren't far at all off of projection, so that was good. Nothing surprising occurred. Um, so I'm going to be preparing the 2015 financial statements for submission to the state, and then the auditors will be here in March. So that's it for me. Okay. Oh, the telephone bill payment system. It's not up <clears throat> and running yet, but it should be by the end of the month, so that uh, by the 1st of uh, February we should be good to go, and we'll be able to pass on instructions along to customers. Sounds great. Thank you. Judy? <clears throat> um, just uh, the great news is that I uh, now have an intern <coughs> who it looks like will be able to spend some time with Denise as well, helping her out because we've uh, just completed interviews for the, the uh, clerk's assistant position. It looks like we'll be able to make a, an offer probably tomorrow or Thursday. And so that gives us actually more help than we've had ever. So um, we should be able to share the wealth and get, get some folks down to help Denise and help out Ruthann a little bit. And I just also acknowledge um, the work of Miss Morgan's third graders and looking forward to seeing their work coming up. <clears throat> and I think that's it. Uh, the uh, the intern, just a little bit uh, to expound on that, the intern is from Wright State and she is in the um, MPA program um, mm -hmm. over there and they have to do an internship and uh, she's really interested in being a village manager. Yeah. So. Oh. Um, she's trying to get a little uh, hands-on experience oh, that's great. with government. So. Well, good. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Now we've got uh, board and commission reports. Jerry, you're starting. Um, <clears throat> planning the last meeting, we just took care of uh, documents that needed to be updated and so forth, and nothing major. Well, let's see. I don't believe there was a uh, Green County meeting. I'm sorry? Green County. Now, I'm down to the next. Oh, you're looking at Karen. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I go. I, 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 I thought there might have been one, but. I kept checking, but I couldn't. They may not be sending the packets to Jerry, um, Judy. They've gotten, well, they've gotten the update, but their meeting is what, when third, Thursday? third Thursday. Third yeah. Thursday. Yeah, at 530, I believe. Yeah. Seven. No, I thought I'll, it was 7.30. 7.30, then they have a, another one that's not the whole. Right, the executive committee. Yep. <clears throat> and let's see, finance committee, We, you guys have gotten excellent reporting from Melissa on the finance and haven't heard any complaints. <clears throat> um, no longer on the community resources. Yeah, so I can take over from there. So um, I am now the, uh, the representative for community resources, and there was a meeting last week 
Um, the discussion uh, basically centered around sort of where community resources is going and they're going to be doing some internal discussion about that. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, one piece that they felt was settled was kind of part of what their mission initially had been, which was to sort of prepare the property uh, for next steps um, that, you know, what we've called the CBE. And um, so now they're going to kind of figure out, is there a next mission or has community resources done the work that it should be <coughs> doing? Um, uh, Arts and Culture Commission. Uh, community Access Panel. Oh, is that next? Mm -hmm. Oh, did I skip it? Sorry. Um, I guess I wrote these in a different order. So Community Access Panel, um, I believe, so Judy, we do have the HDMI switcher now? Or that's, okay. On this particular computer, <laughs> yes. Oh, but we, we still need it um, for the station, I think. Is that right, Susan? That sounds right. Okay. So uh, just, I think this is interesting uh, for us to understand. The HDMI <laughs> switcher will allow our viewers at home to see if we've got PowerPoint up then Susan will be able to switch between what's on the screen versus seeing us. So um, mm -hmm. that's in process that's to be implemented. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'll be great. Um, I did want to highlight in <coughs> Susan's report um, about the sort of lack of use of the many DVDs that she is now generating. And I do support the idea of exploring moving forward uh, what needs to be done you know who needs dvds and and what the usage is and so susan's evaluating that before anything changes of course a recommendation would come to council um the point that was mentioned in the community access panel meeting uh minutes about doing <coughs> an it security audit is something i know that uh melissa is thinking about and and i believe patty's been talking thinking about it as well right um I, do you want to say something about that or um, I just um, I know that um, was it Lebanon no Clinton County I know that Clinton County what they did was that um, they had a consultant come in and look at all of their IT needs and their security and all of that and I, I wanted to read Judy was able to get me um, their report on that and I wanted to be able to um, read that and then possibly talk to council about bringing a company in like that to look at all of our IT needs and security and and, and see what they would recommend. Right. I didn't think it was just security. I thought it was IT it in was. general. It was right. everything, yeah. But obviously, you know, a big piece of this is, you know, all municipalities are ripe for hackers. Absolutely. And uh, so we do need to be cognizant of that. Mm -hmm. um, also, the issue's been brought up several times about tech support for the station. So I know we're <coughs> exploring um, whether our current provider can do that or if we need to look elsewhere. And I already mentioned that the, um, the wireless mesh and the broadband, community broadband proposals will be coming uh, in a month. So uh, Arts and Culture Commission. Um, I did want to highlight uh, again that we're accepting nominations for the VITA until March 1st. Um, the commission is working on policy and procedure for the John Bryan Community Gallery to make sure that that can be implemented uh, effectively. And um, yeah, I, I thought one of the goals that the commission's talking about, which is interesting, is looking at fundraising um, as an activity for supporting public art. So not just looking to the village to fund things, but creative ways that could support those activities. Um, so I'm interested to hear more about that. And I guess lastly, Economic Sustainability <coughs> Commission, as Karen mentioned, we had sort of the first official meeting um, and we kind of reviewed some of the pieces that maybe make sense to look at initially including um, an incentive policy for the village, uh, which we don't really have anything formal related to that. Um, reviving the revolving loan fund and how that could look. We do have some good documents about how that ran in the past. And Melissa has told us that we do have um, you know, funds that uh, we want to think about what should be done. And 
then of course there are things like looking at the draft economic sustainability plan which really is very much of a draft it has some good ideas but it would need a lot of fleshing out so a lot of cool things great group and as karen mentioned uh several other people interested so i think this is going to be a really valuable asset for that goal that we talked about earlier um <clears throat> so did you go to the energy board meeting okay yeah um, so the energy board uh, focused its attention on uh, what we've already talked about looking at the proposals from different solar providers and um, for someone who is uh, not really educated in this realm <laughs> well I guess I would say it's really nice to have a bunch of engineers who hmm. are because <laughs> I sort of sat there going hmm, mm, mm. but um, I'm convinced that they all know, they and staff all know what they're talking about and I felt like it seemed like people were really coming together working really well together too that's which I appreciate um, so mediation program the mediation so I didn't so I'm, I'm I'll move right down my list um, the mediation doesn't the the committee doesn't meet until March, but I plan on getting together with John Gudgel before then to start talking with him about how we might work more together. Um, the Environmental Commission is looking at a number of projects and work ongoing with the um, Climate Action Plan. We started talking about how to do education around the Wellhead Protection Plan. Um, a couple of the members are working on um, drafting a change for the lawn ordin ordin ordinance that would allow people who are doing environmentally friendly lawns, uh, rain gardens, different ways of in integrating um, <laughs> more natural areas into their lawn, how to do that in a way that works with um, whatever requirements the village has in regards to lawn. Um, I'm going to be coming to the council with a proposal for uh, getting uh, stopping use of disposable plastic bottles in the John Bryan Center. And I, I was happy to see that we all have some kind of <coughs> non disposable container. Um, uh, the Environmental Commission's also started looking at 2000. Oh, did someone put theirs away? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> that was a prop. That was a prop. <laughs> She's going to use it again. Okay. <laughs> We've started working on our 2016 goals. And as I mentioned, we did receive uh, notice that uh, we were awarded the Clean Ohio grant. So we will be meeting sometime soon to start uh, fleshing that out the human relations commission one topic of discussion has been um, the website that was started and uh, not aborted but has been languishing uh, yellowspringshelp.org and um, i've been working with katherine hitchcock we're going to actually come to council well first we'll get approval of uh, hrc um, to probably hire someone to help get that finalized um, then on the 25th which is Monday evening uh, Catherine Hitchcock and I are hosting a meeting uh, for community stakeholders on drug issues in Yellow Springs and <coughs> the purpose of the first meeting is to assess what are the problems that we have what are our resources where are the gaps and um, what ideas do people have? So we have uh, someone, we have village government represented, the schools, Antioch College, TNC, um, TCN. TCN. And TNC. <laughs> <laughs> TCN. Um, oh, the uh, RPD. squad. Pardon? RPD. Mm -hmm. yeah, Did you say RPD? Yeah, yeah, the chief and okay. I are both calling. Yeah. Yeah. And when is that? What's the date? It's uh, the 25th. Monday, the 25th. And, and actually, we're doing two sort of back-to-back -back meetings because some people need to come early and some people can't come early. So, so the first one is just I'm sending out tomorrow a list of questions that we want people.
peop the people t who are coming to have already addressed so that th we can get that information together. Can you add all council members to that email? Yeah, list? yeah, sure. I'll do that. Are, are you done? Because I wanted to go back to something that mm -hmm. you said about a consultant to work on the website. Um, Actually, I would I wouldn't like to say a consultant. I, well, but I, I just think that any kind of contract, any kind of consult, it's consultant. Mm -hmm. um, needs to run through the village. I, you know, I have, and I think when we're talking about a website that's village owned and that's village operated, that our staff has to be involved in that, and that we just can't have the commission doing that without staff. Well, I was going to. Ha we're going to talk with the commission first, and then bring it to council. Okay. Is that well? Yeah, work? yeah. I mean, yeah. I just want. I, it sounded like maybe it was farther along. No, than no, that. no, no, no. Okay. No, it's just that it's just been sitting there, right. and at this point, it either is going to die, or we're going to have to put some mm -hmm. some other effort and funds, some resources. Although that's it. the help. That's not an HRC website. That's an, that's basically a totally independent website, right? Who? But who it was owned it, it was. Yeah. I mean, it was funded by village funds. It via started the HRC. Out. Yeah. For the so. for the annual fees and. Yeah, it was set up by a, a web designer. Mm -hmm. um, but the original idea was <clears throat> that the HRC members were going to populate it. Um, then we had an intern, um, and she got sick. So that's why it's kind of. So I would, you know, I, I guess two things I would say is, you know, maybe there are other funds in the village, like Community Foundation and, and other funds. And, and second, that. Um, to make sure that there is an owner that is a, a, an owner, a figurative owner, that is going to take responsibility before we spend more funds, because it sounds like we've spent funds that have essentially been wasted, because it wasn't followed. I mean, I was involved. I went. I sat at a two-hour meeting, learning how to populate this website, and mm -hmm. this is the last word I heard about it. So I would be um, I would be very concerned about more money being expended on that if there was not an owner responsible for that website. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> as I said, HRC will we'll talk about it, see where we get, and come to council. And, and if, you know, if we have other ideas, given your input, we'll bring that to council as well. Okay. Cool. Um, Chamber, we have a meeting, um, we have a, a member meeting, a lunch and learn this Thursday. It is about uh, payroll compliance issues. Um, timing is perfect about W-2s, 1099s are particular, I think particularly troublesome for people and just other HR issues as it relates to uh, payroll um, compliance it is being um, sponsored by U.S. Bank and there will be pizza. So um, it's at noon here at A and B in the Bryan Center on Thursday. Karen, can I ask a question? So is that? Do you think that's also going to go through? Like, what forms need to be yeah. filled out? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and our then our annual meeting is on the 18th, February 18th. Um, so um, that's always that's always good. That's out at Antioch University Midwest um, from six to eight. And there's information about both on our website. Um, MVRPC actually did not have a meeting on um, uh, in, in January, but I will be going to the February meeting. But there has been, I guess, because this has been discussed, I will bring it up, because um, <clears throat> Lori talked about it from, from going to the Green County Regional Planning meetings, that um, basically the state of Ohio has said that there will not be funding for the complete Route 35, um, getting rid of the exits, doing the flyovers, that will not be funded anytime in the near future or probably distant future. Um, there's been an alternative proposed by the state that's been um, kind of presented to MVRPC and other, um, other organizations that seems to be, um, you know, a lot less expensive and um, will at least make it safer and make traffic, keep traffic moving. I don't totally understand it, so I don't want to say anything about it, but it, that does appear to be going forward um, and probably at a pretty rapid pace. Um, 
So I think that's good because it really is not a good situation um, in, on, on Route 35. Um, future agenda items. So we've got 2016 goals. I, we, I've got down, we have a discussion on the 1st of February. We'll have the resolution on the 16th of February. Council rules and procedures resolution that will be on the 1st of February. Um, Ms. Morgan's class will be coming on the 1st of February. Cuteness overload, <laughs> just everybody be ready for that. Yeah. Um, let's see, Ju or, uh, Patty, these next two items. Uh, I am going to say that the um, OWDA will probably be on the 1st. Okay. Um, and the resolution regarding the Glen annexation um, is not going to be on the 1st because the uh, county had a couple of comments on their plot map. So, so we think maybe the 16th, let's just put it in for the 16th. Yeah, I would say maybe the 16th. Um, anything else? It's what did we... We, do have, I do think we have a presentation. I'm sorry, I forgot to put them on, but we are starting to, the board and commission uh, annual reports are starting to roll in. So I'll, I'll put that in the future agenda items. I think we have one on the 1st and two on the 16th. Do you know who? Uh, 16th is Library Commission and uh, I think Environmental Commission. I'm okay, well, I'll just, I just include this. Okay, yeah. did we come up with anything else for the, in this particular meeting that we were going to? Um, so I guess we will revisit the website social media policy. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can have a draft Facebook page for the next meeting if that fits. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I think it's more about, you know, maybe getting that, getting that template, getting that draft mm -hmm. up, and then that'll give us more to talk about. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we're that far off on the, on the policy. Um, anything else? Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussion of ongoing litigation. So moved. Second. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Wintrow. Yes. Pouch. Yes. Sims. Yes. McQueen. Yes. And the village manager, assistant village manager, and solicitor will be present. Thank As you. As will the chief. As will the chief.